Hi, I'm Dr. Kiki, and you're watching Food Science. Today we're going to learn all about the chemistry behind making fudge. That's right, I said chemistry behind fudge. Turns out that fudge is very special in the candy world. Its recipe is based on the chemical principles of supersaturation and crystallization. To start making fudge, what you need to do is take heavy cream with chocolate, some sugar, and a little bit of salt. So I'm gonna start out putting one cup of heavy cream in this saucepan. I turn the temperature on low and add four ounces of chocolate. I'm gonna melt this chocolate into the cream before adding any of the other ingredients. We're just gonna sit here and I'm gonna stir this. The chocolate's starting to melt on the bottom of the pan. I can feel it. So now the chocolate is fully melted into my cream and I'm gonna add my sugar. I'm gonna add two cups of sugar, which is way more than cream should normally be able to dissolve. I'm also using super fine granulated sugar so that it'll break down a lot more easily and we'll be able to dissolve it into here. I'm gonna add a pinch of salt. And I'm also going to add a tablespoon of caro syrup. Caro syrup is corn syrup. It's made up of glucose molecules, which is different from the table, the table sugar. Table sugar is made up of sucrose. What ends up happening as you mix this all together is that the sucrose and the glucose compete with each other and kind of messes up the crystallization process so that crystals don't form earlier than you want them to. We're going to keep increasing the temperature of this solution until it's boiling and we want it to reach well beyond the normal boiling temperature of milk. So we've reached our boiling temperature. It's 234 degrees Fahrenheit. And what's happened right now is the fudge is boiling furiously. And this means that all of the sugar has been completely dissolved into our milk and chocolate solution. So we know that we have a completely super saturated solution at this point, so we can move on. What I was doing just a second ago is wiping down the sides of my saucepan to make sure that there aren't any stray sugar grains hiding around. One of the problems with the cooling process is that now that it, this, this syrup is super saturated, it really wants to crystallize. The sugar doesn't want to be a liquid. It wants to be a solid, so it really wants to crystallize. But we're not gonna let it. I'm gonna take this, pour it into a cooling container. Now that we've taken it away, the, away from the heat, we're going to put it in a quiet place and we're not gonna agitate it, we're not going to stir it anymore, we're just gonna let it cool on its own. So I'm gonna cover this fudge with a nice piece of cheesecloth that's going to help keep any bits of dust or other debris from falling on our fudge as we let it cool. And it's gonna cool for a long time. So now I've waited a couple of hours for my fudge to cool down. I haven't been agitating it, well maybe a little. I stuck a thermometer in it so I could find out exactly how cool it was getting. Now let's take a look at it. I had this cloth over to make sure that no stray dust particles got in to keep it as clean as possible. It looks really good. I've got a nice shiny top on my fudge. It looks like it hasn't started to crystallize at all. This is great. But now we're at the just the right temperature and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of butter, two tablespoons of butter to the top of the mix here and a teaspoon of vanilla. There's something about the combination of vanilla and chocolate that really, really makes chocolate pop. And so now I'm gonna go back and grab my spoon from earlier and take out my thermometer and just start stirring. I've waited to this perfect temperature. I'm mixing like crazy. My butter is gonna melt. And right now it's got like a nice shiny sheen on it. And this is gonna stay for quite a while until all the ingredients get mixed together and the crystals start to form. When the crystals start to form by my stirring, I'm bringing sugar molecules into contact with each other so that they can start actually 
forming crystals. But because I'm stirring it now, I'm making tinier crystals than would have formed otherwise. And so I'm going to keep stirring and stirring and stirring and stirring. And what I'm waiting for, the shininess to go away. When the shininess goes away, it usually takes a few minutes. That means that my fudge has set and all the crystallization is really getting going. So I've been stirring this here for a little while and it's changed from its shiny black texture to a kind of more matte brown look. And so this indicates to me that it's about ready to, to turn into real fudge. So I'm going to put this to the side for a second, take my little 8x8 pan here and give it a little bit of butter. And then we just take what we've got and pour it right into our pan. So hopefully, I've, I've followed all of the cautions of the recipe correctly, and I didn't cause crystallization in our super saturated fudge solution earlier than I wanted it to happen. Hopefully, if we let this set overnight, or even just a couple of hours, it'll start to harden up on its own now that it's started to hit that crystallization. So we'll just take this, and this you just leave off to the side. You can cover it if you like to, if you just want to make sure you don't get anything into it. You let it sit for a while, and when you come back later, you should have something resembling this. Something nice and fudgy, something that you can cut into nice edible squares. Mmm. Mmm. And hopefully, it won't have a grainy texture on your tongue. Hopefully, it'll be nice and smooth. And so that's our fudge, the chemistry of fudge, all in one go. And while you're eating your food, just remember, it's not just food. It's science. <laughs>